Hi, I'm Wendy Palazzi, and I'm the gifted support teacher at the middle school, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about gifted education in the Mechanicsburg Area School District. Our team of gifted support teachers consists of Melissa Palazzi, who is the elementary gifted support teacher. She services all six elementary school buildings in the district. I am at the middle school, and Matt Marshall is at the high school. So if you ever have any questions about anything, make sure you touch base with any one of us. We're happy to help you at any time. Chapter 16 is the set of rules that govern gifted education in the state of Pennsylvania. So everything we do falls under chapter 16. And that requires us to make sure that we are providing acceleration, enrichment, and, or a combination of both to our gifted students. Now, in the state of Pennsylvania, being identified as gifted is um, either having an IQ of 130 or an IQ slightly lower, but also having multiple criteria. And when we write a GIEP for a student who is deemed gifted, um, it requires us to take a look at their individual strengths. It is completely a strength-based document, and we need to look at whether the student is in need of enrichment, acceleration, or a combination of both. Some of the academic characteristics you might see from a student include some of those things listed here on the left-hand side. Um, they learn information quickly. They read early. Some of those things that you would normally think about in a gifted student. But you also have to remember with the pros kind of comes some of the negatives. So a lot of times you might see a student is bored. They might be disruptive or acting out in class because of that. So while it's often thought of that the gifted student is going to be the student raising their hand and eager to learn in the back of the class, that's not always the case. Um, and you have to be aware that sometimes there are negative behaviors that go along with the positive ones in a gifted student. Some of the social and emotional characteristics of a gifted student that you might see, we often see that they prefer to be with older children or um, adults even, great sense of humor. A lot of times you can see in this list perfectionistic tendencies, very intense, sometimes focused on one general interest that they just keep coming back to again and again and again. We also talk about twice exceptional students, which are students that are identified as gifted, but also have another need or a disability. So these could be a student who receives speech services, but also gifted services. Um, they might have emotional behaviors, ADHD, um, autism. So we need to make sure that we're servicing these students as well. They do not tend to look like your typical gifted students. Um, sometimes their exceptionalities mask their giftedness. And so sometimes they're the hardest students to reach. Um, and we really need to make sure that we're doing our best to reach every one of these students. Often twice exceptional students will have an IEP with gifted services inside. A student will never have both a GIEP and an IEP. If they're twice exceptional and they need services at both ends, they will receive an IEP and have those gifted services put into the IEP. Um, sometimes a student will have a 504 and also a GIEP. That's totally possible. What do you do if you suspect a student might be gifted? That's simple. You talk to your counselor. Your counselor will take it from there. Um, and keep in mind that students can be identified at any level K to 12. The key to providing services to gifted students is collaboration. It works best when the gifted teacher and the regular ed teacher work together and students are best, students' needs are best met when that happens. Some of the things we can do, you can see basic differentiation. That's stuff that you would normally do anyway. You change up your questioning, you would provide different feedback, um, you might even um, ask a different, a different type of question, um, probe a little deeper. 
but things like enrichment and acceleration are very purposeful. And you need to look at enrichment as diving deeper into the content and acceleration as moving ahead, maybe jumping grade levels. Um, and that doesn't just mean need to be whole grade skipping. It could be moving to the next unit a little faster, um, moving to um, above grade level reading materials, those sorts of things as well. Things that you can do to differentiate for gifted learners, here's a whole long list of things, but if you need any suggestions, make sure you talk to your gifted support teacher at your level and we'll be happy to help you out if you need to um, differentiate for the gifted learners in your classroom. Keep in mind, my motto every time I go into a GIEP is gifted education should offer different work, not more work. Remember, kids are not just gifted for a small part of the day. So their minds are always thinking, changing, um, they're always eager to learn more and do and often do more, not always, but often do more. Um, and for that reason, you need to make sure that you are providing those opportunities all day long. Yes, your gifted support teacher might have those students for a half an hour or an hour each day, or even a half an hour, an hour during the week. But that doesn't mean that's the only time they should be receiving services. Here, this is, I think, the graphic that's the most meaningful. If you take a look at this, the average IQ score of 100, the students that fall down here at this range, you can see that's 0.1% of the population, 2% of the population here fall between 70 and lower. And you can see those are the students that we would all eagerly do everything we can to support those students because they are going to struggle the most in a regular education setting. Well, the same is true for the students that fall at this end of the bell curve. They are as far from the middle as these students over here. And so you need to remember they need an equal amount of attention and they need the same effort put into differentiating for them. We can't forget about those students because they are struggling in this normal world too. So please remember, don't give up on your gifted students, keep pushing them and keep trying to make things um, challenging for them. And as always, if you have questions or need ideas, you wanna talk about anything, reach out to us there. If you want more information, there are little videos embedded in this presentation that will help you maybe give you some more information. I know this was super fast, but um, there is lots more information in those videos if you are eager to learn more about gifted education. So. Hopefully we will be hearing from you if you need anything. Otherwise, have a fantastic day.